Kobe. Good Kobe. Kobe. What is up you guys? It's your boy Captain Jack. Welcome back to this channel. We got a nice little crew. We're out on Ben's Blue Water. What's up? New boat owner. Brand new. What year is this? 05. Brand new 2005 Blue Water. <laughs> we got my dad running the boat. We got Spinny. That's when you graduated high school, Benny boy. Ew. We, uh, we got some beautiful water. We're diving pretty far north and normally it's pretty murky and nasty up here, but today it's gonna be a good day. I got some serious Bonita numbers for these guys. So I'm gonna put them on the the blue, or the, what is it, the uh, the wave back tunas. Rocking the 120 Rub Allen. But I did forget something pretty essential. We're gonna find out if how essential it is. I forgot my wetsuit. Uh, I brought everything else, but I forgot my wetsuit. At least I have like a rash guard to protect me from the sun and maybe some uh, uh, jellyfish, but Hopefully it's not too bad, but gonna make the best out of the situation. Ben, what are we getting into today? Gonna have some fun, dive in some nice water with some with some friends, man. Go have a good time. I meant like what species? Uh, I want a nice mangrove snapper, cobia maybe. Yeah. Mutton. It's good Snappers and cobias. It's a good day for it. We're Mutton's diving during the week, so it's always always a good time. Well, I have you here. Like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys down below. Welcome back underwater and welcome to the voiceovers everyone. If you're new, consider subscribing to the channel, push around the content, and I hope you learn some tips and tricks on this dive. So now that gun I'm using is the Rob Allen Timberline 120 roller. It's an absolute laser and you'll see it in this video, uh, really what it's capable of. But we're starting off a little deep and I just grabbed one of these little blue runners that Ben had as bait and what you can always do to chum if you don't have a bag of pilchers or something like that, freeze up one of these fish, grab it and do what I did where you cut little incisions and you just use your knife to kind of shave off pieces and it drifts down and you can follow it down just like any other chum. And usually whenever I'm done Kind of shredding it up like that i'll just tuck it in my waistband and then go ahead of, you know and just dive so we're going to go ahead you guys are going to hold your breath with breath with me on this dive and this is one of my first ones and i actually go with ben on this dive and we kind of found out these guys did a couple of drops beforehand and i even kind of figured out that there's a huge thermocline down deep and we actually lose each other. So I think it's a better idea. It's honestly even more safe if we go together and Ben stays at the surface and it's more likely he would come up and see both of us. Or if one of us is in trouble, at least the other person knows what's going on. So we start heading down to this little rocky edges and we really didn't know. Honestly, the GoPro does a much better job of showing clearer viz than it really is. I honestly could barely see Spinny on that drop, but you can see those big AJs off in the distance. This is like one of my first drops, so I figured, shoot, the AJs are gonna be around. No need to you know, shoot them immediately. I was really hoping a mutton or maybe even a gag grouper would come by, and this is back whenever it was season for gags. But I make this drop, we're just kind of cruising along, finding, you know, understanding what the current's doing, checking on the viz seeing what the structure is down there and we decide to head up to the surface we have a lot of funny dialogue and banter between all of us on this trip so i do a lot of topside recording and we get into some pretty good fish so be sure to keep watching and i know you guys will love it Surprised you didn't rip tits on one of those AJs. Oh, wait, that fucking hunk of your country go off. Could have ripped on one. Yeah, it's kind of a. Uh... Couple, couple of big AJs, like big. <laughs> Pop one next chance we get. Yeah, I was waiting for something else though. I think so was I. I mean, I was like, dude, any second this fucking monster's gotta show up. <laughs> what would you take? No, yeah, we're, you know, we were on it. Hey, we'll do another drop in a sec. Mm -hmm. A lot of triggers. Yeah. All right. 
Five bucks. Five bucks. Stone AJ. Stone only. This drop. First one drop. One drop. All right. <laughs> so you guys heard what the wager was on this next drop. Again, I'm not gonna probably push myself to the point of where I'm not coming up unless I get an AJ. And when I make this drop, I realize that I'm not on the structure that we originally were. So I figured it'd be really hard to spot an AJ coming by considering we're really not in the same area. I guess the current probably pushed us off of it. We're in more of a sandy area rather than the rocky ledge area. But either way, I wanted to go all the way down to the bottom and sit on the bottom and a nice mangrove snapper comes in. This time I'm not gonna take the chances. I wanna make sure I get a fish in the boat. It was kind of hard to see that fish, but so I just aimed for the gill plate, kind of the advantage of having this roller is there's not really a serious kick to it. So my elbow was bent and I just almost hit fired it a little bit and I was able to land this fish. And it's crazy that you can shoot fish in this murky water on the reef and li then literally I could take this Rob Island 120 roller and shoot a yellowfin tuna or wahoo with it. So again, one of the most ver versatile guns that I've ever used and I absolutely love it and highly recommend it. Nice grover. <sighs> 12 incher. <laughs> Not really. It's like a little bit of rock. <sighs> Dude, what are you talking about? This is a stud. Are you fucking, are you fucking high? <sighs> it's barely 12. <sighs> well, I'm gonna bleed him and stuff. Giant. It's not bad. Yeah, man. I'll make some, I wanna make some Drake sweet ceviche. Have you had that before? Yeah, you did. In the Bahamas, the one with like the Worcestershire sauce. It's very unusual. We decide to head over to a different area and the day kind of started off slow in that first spot. And this is, these are all numbers that we were just kind of using off of sonar, off of pre-knowledge of people saying to go to certain areas but this other spot was a actual public number and it was a marked wreck but even though it's a public number there's always fish moving in and out of it regardless if it gets hit a lot whether it gets yeah, i mean a lot of people think it's a secret number but honestly the public numbers hold a lot of fish and you'll see this is a prime example Spinny went down there, shot a nice AJ, and I just started to descend, checking if the shot is really good, and it looked like a really good shot, and I decided I wanted to double up and get two, and which is our limit of AJs. And especially since we already talked about it, my dad said he wanted some for some smoked fish, as well as Ben did this, said the same thing. So I was hoping for a stone shot, but unfortunately, I just shot through the gills, Either shot, or um, it's a high chance of landing the fish, but I would have much rather have tried to stone this fish. I should have taken a little bit more time, but I was kind of towards the end of my dive, rushed it a little bit, but either way, we're gonna make sure we land these fish.
They're, they're a lot smaller than I, they looked down there. I was like, dude, this is like a 40 pounder. Perfect. <laughs> Y'all better be lucky they weren't 40 pounders. <laughs> now, these ones gave us a run. No, I, I, I was like. Pulling mine up, I'm like, this is going to be perfect. They're going to come right up to my That's what I was expecting them to do. And they, they, they did. They did. You say yours is bigger? You think? I don't know, dude, they're really close. Well, yours is the baby brother, but yeah. I saw you for years. That was fun. Yeah, dude. Dude, studs only. Dude, yours is significantly bigger. It's night and day, honestly. Ugh. We did multiple drops on this you know, he heavy fish area, but it was really hard to pinpoint it because the wind was blowing us a little bit one way and the tide was doing a couple, or the current was doing a couple of funky things. So it was really hard to hit it perfectly, especially with a breathe up because we're diving in about 90, between 90 and 100 feet. And it's not easy to just quickly make a quick drop. So this is kind of the aftermath of it. Unfortunately, the only thing I saw was a mutton and he was kind of giving me the tail wag off in the distance, but at least it was good news that they were around here in the sand right there. He was kind of cruising on the bottom right there at the bottom of the screen. I could have taken a long shot, but this guy was on the outs. Again, the GoPro does a really good job of making it look closer than it appears, but this spot I was at, I was really hoping that mutton would come in a little closer, but you see how fast we are flying, or I'm flying across the bottom. That goes to show how hard it is to hit this spot perfectly, especially with the viz, especially the fact that you can't really see much, and it's just not super safe, along with it's not easy to make sure you're making a drop on the right spot. So we ended up ditching this all together, going to an area that's a little shallower, and it proves to be the right move. Mine was being a little... Now the area we went to held a barge and a bunch of rubble, and this was Ben's first drop, which was a good sign for what's to come. I almost shot a sheepers. He went so far under the barge, I swear my whole body was under the barge to go get him. And he was wrapped up on the table there. Oh, he's not. I was wondering what. Here's a drop you guys do not want to miss. We did a little bit of chumming on this spot, but realistically, we didn't need to do that at all. Now, you would think. 
it's kind of a sucky situation to have Viz this bad, or at least to where halfway down you can finally start seeing things. But it does kind of hide you while you're at the surface. So when you make a drop, if you scoot along the bottom, you can pop up on fish. And that's exactly what happens on this drop. I cruise down, I see a bunch of snook, and I've heard that Kubera sometimes <laughs> hang out with snooks. So my eyes are peeled, and one of these things look like they don't belong and it's right there it is a kubera snapper chilling with this school of snook i took a really long shot was completely unsure i saw just the edge of the spear sticking out wasn't sure if i got an all the way through shot i know how powerful these things are so i'm giving him just enough slack but putting just enough tension to keep him from going into this hole and dislodging the spear and I'm just sitting here hovering, wearing him out right on the edge of this structure until I can get him away from the structure and try to get a backup shot at him. And that's what I do once I get to the surface. I'm looking around. I think Smitty was actually on that drop right next to me. But as we head to the surface, I want to get a backup shot. I really don't want to force it, especially because this fish is going to make the day. I need a second shot. I need a second shot. I need a second shot. Kubera. Second shot for you. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Where's Ben? Yeah. It's, the shot's kind of iffy. No, I got him. Yeah. What's better than a Kobe? <laughs> Dude. Epic backup shot, dude. I got it on camera. Too. <laughs> I didn't have any breath and I just went down there. Hey, is my GoPro on? Nice. What'd you get? Studs! <laughs> I was ripping him out of the rebel. Boom. He was with all the snook. Yeah, I thought he got off. I was ripping him out. Ripping him, ripping him, it was a long shot. It was a long shot. Yeah, long ass shot. I saw him going straight. Did you hear? Oh, you saw him? Oh, I was right down there with you. Oh, shit. Did you see me shoot? Uh, I just heard it and I saw the sand going right through the rubble. And I was like, I thought I heard you shoot. Like, that thing got off or whatever it was. I thought it was mine. <laughs> Yeah, man. <laughs> was not expecting that. That's dope, dude. We needed that, buddy. <laughs> Who wants to? Oh yeah. Cam Jack, what we got, dude? Nice, local Kubera. Was not expecting that on that drop. I saw a bunch of snook. And I was thinking to myself, I was like, man, there could be a Kubera cruising with these guys. Sure enough, he popped out like a freaking ghost out of the mist and thudded, darted away. And I was like, oh, he's gone. And then he kind of started to come back into range. And I took a super long shot and uh, hit him all the way through here and came out like here. And his face got all scratched up. Like, yeah, dude, look at that. His face got all scratched from the uh, wreckage because he was trying to get inside of that wreckage and I just was ripping him. I was just, I can't believe it went all the way through. Like, he was going nowhere if I was ripping him and I was, I gave him some, the heat and yeah, dude, that's a beautiful non-Siguatera 
Kubera. Shot him with the, uh, got him with the beautiful Rob Allen Timberline. This thing isn't a freaking weapon. This is gonna be Ben's next next gun. For sure. He loves it. Woo! As this day is kind of winding down, the visibility started to turn for the better. So it was just Ben and I in the water. We make a drop, decided to use up all the remaining chum that we have. And it actually wasn't that fishy of a drop. And it kind of goes to show that even though it's murky, that kind of worked out in our, in our favor earlier in the day. Because now that it was really clear, it wasn't, wasn't really quality fish, but there were a few smaller fish and it was easier to see them. Ben just took a shot shot a sheep's head and I decided to try to do the same thing descend to the bottom in the sand see a, I see a sheep's head off in the distance I'm starting to follow it it's kind of giving me the tail wag and a mangrove snapper came up and basically just sacrificed himself instead of that sheep's head landed a gill plate shot kind of just behind the gill plate head to the surface I'm kind of done for the day I was so stoked that we got that kubera and that really made the whole trip in my opinion and I know the guys were really stoked but it made this you know it especially going to an area where we don't really have a whole lot of numbers and we made the best of the situation so really stoked on that have a nice quality and a mixture of different fish so we're gonna be eating multiple different meals in different styles as well and I'm glad I could bring you guys on this trip and stay tuned to see what we do with the rest of that Kubera Nah, dude. We backed ourselves up. Holy sky, dude. Nice! Whoa! Oh. Is that a Kubera? Dude, I just, this one pooped out. The other Kubera pooped that guy out. I shot you a stud. <laughs> Giant, dude. Did you reload after you shot that one? Yeah, on the same dive. No. All right, you guys, we're on our way in. Have a nice, best of fish. A very healthy looking box. Finished off with the little uh, mangrove, another sheep's head. And I'll see you guys back at home, cooking this stuff up, see what we get into. All right, you guys, we do, we're doing something a little different. It's late at night, and I'm over at Ben's house, and he has a special, he has a special little, treat he, he left but i'm gonna get him back here and he has a special treat he he made up for me ben ben you're gonna show me the special special oh, deal oh, the after i shot that kubera today this is the aftermath look at that that's nice just to put it just reference thing could take off my mouth yeah it's a big thing that thing that was a good one yeah it's weird because when you look at jaws and then you're like, you try you to imagine, you try to imagine the rest of the fish there. And so sometimes it's like the jaws, they seem smaller than the fish would have been. But if you imagine the fish, it's like, this is like a 50 pound king. That's a monster. That's a dog, that's a, that's dog, a dog snapper. A dog snapper. You think Pages is going to be bigger than oh, that? Oh, yeah, twice. <laughs> It'll be like this the size like, of a This is like a seven pound dog. Look at, the, look at all the little razors on the bottom. Yeah, they're big. Yeah, look at that. All right, I'm gonna show you that tomorrow in the light. And what did you do to it? What did you do? Did you, you boil it? Ahead. You literally just take the jaws, you rub all the meat off of it. Uh, you let it dry, and then I'll put it in bleach, like dip it in bleach for maybe 30 seconds. Okay. And then uh, I let that dry, and then I do like vinegar, and then I let it sit in the sun, and then I super glue it together. Dude, it's a really it's good. Definitely not an original idea. You did a really good job. There are like a lot of people who have done. Like I know Joey and Tanelli, I've seen on his videos, he's done like whole heads. It turned it turned out really good, like the whiteness of it. I've done them before and they turn out like that. I don't think I, like I, don't that, think I yeah. did that one in vinegar. So there's no vinegar involved with this one. I'm convinced maybe the vinegar is that was the was the, the, the deciding factor. So my mind got destroyed. <laughs> and it turned out not good. I forgot what I did. I think I tried a Wahoo and it didn't turn out very well at all. Um, but yeah, we're going to go record a podcast 
And uh, we'll talk about that in another video. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it that thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already. And I'll see you next week for another adventure. Later.